Hi guys and welcome to Graphic Designer Pro. Today we're going to be creating this really cool creative typography animation and we're going to be creating it as if it's to be used in social media, in this case an Instagram story. It's a really easy but effective workflow and it's the kind of thing you're actually seeing right now being used as promotional content on Instagram stories. All the project files that I use in this video will be available for download via the link in the description and if you like this video remember to hit like and subscribe so you don't miss out on any future motion design content like this. So let's get into After Effects and get going. So here we are in After Effects and the first thing we're going to do is go and make a new composition. So we've got to Composition, New Composition. Now I'm going to adjust the width and the height here to match the pixel size of what the Instagram story would be. So I'm going to change this to be 1080 in width and 1920 in height. I'm going to keep my frame rate at 25 and I'm going to have my duration at 10 seconds. I'm going to call this Insta Comp. Okay, I'm going to create a background for this. So if we right click in our timeline, New, Solid. I'm going to call this background. I'm going to do a dark grey colour, I think, something like this. OK. OK. We've now got our background solid. I'm going to select that in the timeline. Command D to duplicate that. Click it once in the timeline. Press Enter to rename this and call this grid. I'm going to go over to my effects and presets panel over here on the right. And I'm going to type in here grid. I'm going to use this one here underneath the generate option. Drag this on top of your grid solid. I'm going to go over to my effects controls panel and I'm going to change this border value to be 2. I'm going to go into opacity here and change this to be 25 or maybe 20. I think I'll do 20. So it's a bit more subtle. I'm going to adjust these corner values slightly. So bring this in slightly and bring this also in just so they're more of a square shape. You can adjust these values so you can get it to look how you want it to look. So I'm happy with these little square kind of grid. This is just to give a bit of background interest. Now I'm going to go to my project panel, right click in the project panel, import, file. I'm going to bring in my logo or anything that you want to bring in at this point to be displayed on the screen. Open. I've got my logo here. I'm going to drag this on top of everything in my timeline. It'll pop up in our comp window. I'm going to go over to my effects and presets, type fill. Bring this one here underneath generate and drag that on top of my logo in the timeline. I'm going to change this colour to be white. OK. And I'm going to go to my align panel and if that is not here you can go down like this. I'm going to align this to be at the bottom of my composition. I'm going to select in the timeline again, press S. I'm going to scale this down I think to be 35%. Let's do 30. Yes, happy with that. And now I can just tab this up slightly, minimise that up. OK. Now what we're going to do is create this moving text that was going around the border of our composition. Go up your text tool, click anywhere in your composition window and type whatever words you want to have around the screen. So I'm going to type Graphic Designer Pro. I'm going to double click it in the timeline just to select it and go over to my character panel and just bring the size down. So I'm going to bring it to be let's say 50, we'll go 40. Now with that text layer still selected in the timeline, go up to your rectangle tool in your toolbar like so. And what we're going to do is just draw a rectangle slightly inwards of the border of our composition, just like this. We can always adjust this as well. Now what we want to do is go into your timeline here and where it says text, select this arrow, go into where it says path options and where the path says none at the moment, we're going to select this and select mask one. So this is going to be using this mask we have just created which is this rectangle as the path for the text. Select that, you see it jumps onto it there which is exactly what we want. I'll move this up just so I can see what is going on. Now what we want to do is where it says reverse path change that to be on. You see how the text just flips there so we can actually read it better. And what we want to do now is duplicate this text however many times it can fit around our composition window. We may have to adjust the spacing or even the text size so it fits around the comp without any obvious gaps. So double click it in the timeline, command C to copy your text, click at the end of your current word, just do a couple of spaces or a space and command V to paste that and you see the drill. So I'll do another space, command V, space, command V and it's literally going to paste around this path that we've just created. Now if we're lucky maybe it'll line up exactly first time but I'm not hopeful. No it's not going to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click on my text. I'm going to go over to my character panel again here and I'm going to increase the space between my letters here just so I can get it so it meets up nicely at the top of my composition like this. Now if we drag through the timeline this is still static. So what we want to do is animate this first margin property here on the left. So if we go to zero in the timeline, toggle on the stopwatch at that point, keep the value at zero, at zero seconds, go along to the end of your timeline, so at 10 seconds, and let's increase this first margin value to be 800. 
enter. We've now created two keyframes and over time this text is just going to travel around your border following that path that we created. A nice simple technique that you can apply to lots of different things. So let's minimize that up go up, hit save. That's our Insta composition ready for our main graphic to be put into it. So let's actually get going creating that main graphic now. So go up to composition, new composition. We're going to create one composition that is called main comp. It's going to be 1920 in width and 1080 in height. Keep it at 10 seconds long and I'm going to keep mine at 25 frames per second or whatever frame rate you'd like to use. Hit OK. I'm now going to go back up to composition and make another new composition and call this one text comp. We're going to be adjusting the size of this composition, but at the moment we'll just keep it at 1920, 1080, 25 frames per second and 10 seconds in duration. So exactly the same as the one we've just created. Okay, so make sure you are in your text comp. Go up to your text tool. Mine is still selected because it's the last tool I've used. Click anywhere in your composition window to create your text layer. I'm going to type motion, double click it in your timeline. I'm going to increase the size of this text to be 150. What I'm going to do is use my align panel again, just to center this up so I know it's in the middle. To do that, I'm going to hit this one here that'll center it. I'm going to bring it down into the middle like so and now we know that's exactly in the middle. I'm going to zoom in, go up to my anchor point tool or my pan behind tool, select the anchor point that's here, move this to be on the very left on that center bounding box point. I'm going to go back up and change to my selection tool and zoom out. Now we're going to edit this text composition size like I said. So to edit the settings of your composition you could literally go up to composition, composition settings or you can just press command K and it'll bring up those same settings for you. So we're going to adjust the height of this composition to 120. Okay and you see how that's changed in our composition window. We now want to go back to our main comp, go to your project panel and bring in that text comp into your timeline of the main comp. Perfect. Right click your composition, pre-compose and we're going to call this text tile and make sure that move all attributes into the new composition is selected. Now what we want to do is go into that text tile comp. So we go into it in the timeline and double click. We're now in our text tile pre-composition. Select your text comp and press R for rotation and we're going to change this value to be 90 so it turns 90 degrees in our composition window. We're going to go over to our effects and presets again. Scroll up here and we're going to type in here motion tile. We we'll use this one here underneath stylize and drag that onto your text comp, which is inside your text tile comp. Go over to your effects controls. I'm going to change this output width to be 1000 and we're going to change our output height to be 1600. Enter. You see what that does there. So if your text is slightly different size or anything like that, you want to fill it so it fills that composition window exactly. So for when I did my text, 1600 fit perfectly, but you might have to adjust that number. Okay, now let's go back to our main comp. So we go over to our effects and presets and type in CC cylinder. Perfect. We're going to take this one here that's underneath perspective, drag that onto your text tile pre-comp in the main comp. We're already getting somewhere. Now we're going to change quite a few of these settings over here on the left in your effects controls. So go into position. We're going to change this position Z value here to be minus 160. Go into your rotation drop down here. We're going to change our rotation X value to be positive 50 and our rotation Z value, we're going to change this to be minus 90. I'm going to minimize that up. I'm going to minimize my rotation drop down up. I'm going to go into light options here. I'm going to change the light height over here to be 40. I'm going to change the light direction to be minus 25. Go into shading. We're going to turn up this diffuse property to be 100. I'm going to turn the metal property to be zero. See, we've got some nice lighting now on our cylindrical text. If you go back into our rotation drop down, we're going to be adding a little expression on this Y rotation value. See if we rotate this, it spins. So that's what we want to do. So I'll undo that for now. We're going to add a little expression rather than keyframing. So if you select option or alt on your keyboard and click once on rotation Y stopwatch, perfect. Your little expression box pops up for you. And we're going to type time asterisk 25 and just click off of that. And now if you press play, it will rotate for you which is exactly what we want. So minimize that up in your timeline. And I'm going to minimize up my cylinder effect in my effects controls panel. I'm going to go back over to my effects and presets, cross off CC cylinder, and I'm going to type in here, turbulent displace. We're going to use this one here underneath distort, drag that on top of your text tile in the timeline, go over to your effects controls for this. And what we're going to do is we're going to add another little expression, but on the evolution property this time. So holding option or alt on your keyboard, click once, on evolution in your turbulent displace effect and we're going to type time asterisk 50 this time and just hit off of that. 
So let's see what we've done here. So now over time, not only is it going to move, it's also going to have that kind of distorted wiggle kind of effect, which looks quite cool. Now at this point, we can stop and you can bring this main graphic into your Instacomp. But what we're going to do in the next part of the tutorial is change this back part of our design to say a different word. So we'll have two words in the graphic instead of one. So we'll go over to our project panel. We're going to duplicate this text tile comp and also this text comp. So select them both in the project panel and command D. You see now we have a text comp2 and a text tile2 comp. Now what I want you to do is go into the text tile2 comp, the one we've just created. So we're now in our new text tile2 comp, but obviously it's a duplicate so it looks exactly the same right now. We're going to replace the footage of this text comp. So what I want you to do is select it in the timeline, go up to text comp2 and select that if it isn't already, start dragging it like so and then hold down command and then option and drag it over the top of this text comp that is currently there, let go of the mouse and then let go of your keys and you see how that replaces that footage in the pre-composition. What this means is we now have this original textile comp which says motion. We also have this now textile 2 comp but because we've replaced this footage we can change this word and it's not going to affect the previous composition that we've already worked on but it's also going to save us having to do it all from the start again. So we'll now go into our text comp 2, double click and we can change this word. For it to look like a smooth design, it will have to have the same amount of characters or you'll have to play with the spacing. Or you could add a symbol, things like that to make it work. I'm gonna go and turn on my rulers and I'm gonna do a little helper here. So I want my new word to fit in the same bounding box so it looks smooth when it's going round in the cylinder. So double click that. So I'm going to use the word design. You see, it's just short of that last line here. So I'm gonna double click it in the timeline, go over to my character panel and just increase the spacing slightly so it matches up with that grid line. Now what I'm also gonna do here, select your text layer in the timeline, the one that you've just changed, go up to layer, transform, I'm gonna flip vertical. So now let's go back to our main comp. In your timeline where it says text tile, select it once, command D in the timeline to duplicate it in the timeline. And now what we want to do is we're going to replace this footage just like we did before, but with this text tile too. That's the one we've just been editing. So again, click text tile. You can pick either one of these in the timeline because they're both just a duplicate at the moment. Select one of them. Go up to your text tile too and select that if it's not already. This is the one that's got your new word in it. Start dragging. Hold command and option on your keyboard. Bring it over the one you have selected in the timeline let the mouse go and let your keys go. And that has now replaced. You see here we've got two versions now. So if I turn off my text tiles, so this was the original one. And you see we've now got our other one here, which says design instead of motion. This saves us having to do the whole process twice. If we turn that off, and you see we've got our original one that remains unchanged. So we're going to change a few other things here. We'll turn them both back on again. What you want to do is make sure that your textile 2 is underneath the original textile layer. Select this first one, this textile, go up to effects controls, go into your cylinder effect where it says render here. So at the moment it says full. What I want you to do is select outside and then if you go and select textile 2, Go into your cylinder effect where it says render, this time select inside. And you see what that's done there. So it literally, if I turn them off, it is only going to be rendering out one half on the inside and one half on the outside. But because they're exact duplicates of each other, the only change is that we've changed the word. And because we've made sure that the spacing is the same, we can now have this almost flowing as one. So it's obviously a bit of an illusion, but I think it looks pretty cool. Now finally we're going to bring this into our Instacomp. So obviously at the moment this is a transparent background because we didn't actually create a background solid. That's okay, it's because we know we've already got our Instacomp all set up which does have a solid background for us. So we go into our Instacomp, go to your project panel, bring in your main comp on top of everything here. It's now in your design. Select it once in the timeline, press S for scale and I'm going to bring this down to be 50. So I'm going to do mine to be 65% of the original size here. Go up to my selection tool and just move it up. Go to my align panel down here and I'll just make sure it's centered. It is now. And there we have our typography animation. So you go back to zero, let it load and press play. There's our little typography animation. I think it looks pretty cool. So that's it guys. I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did, remember to hit like and subscribe so you don't miss out on any future content like this. See you in the next one. If you want to learn more about graphic design, we've created a free one hour training where you'll discover the top five secrets of successful designers, which saves you the hassle of having to figure it all out for yourself. 
We'll be showing you how to immerse yourself in the sector you're designing for, creative thinking and how to spark creativity, what good composition is and how you can achieve it in your designs, how to pick the right colours for your designs and how to pick the right typefaces for your projects. So if you're serious about levelling up your design skills, then make sure to sign up for the next free webinar. Space is limited and these events always fill up fast because they're significantly better than the information others charge you for. And ours is free. The link's in the description. You're not going to want to miss it. I'll see you there.